first of all, we'd like to acknowledge we're on the um, land of the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation. That's where I am anyway. And we acknowledge their elders past and present and their emerging leaders. So we're here today um, to look at uh, the, the, the WSCF Asia Pacific and um, to um, uh, meet Fanny and our way. So let us commit ourselves to God. We just say a brief prayer. Oh Lord, thank you that we can all be here today from Australia, different parts of Australia, from East Timor, from Hong Kong and from Myanmar. We especially pray for Fanny from Hong Kong and Ah Wei from Myanmar, that you would bless and keep them and that you would guide them in all wisdom. Please bless our meeting today and grant that we may learn more and understand better the situation that they face. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so friends, um, maybe it's nice if everybody just introduces themselves and says you know, um, uh, uh, briefly who they are and where they, they're from, something about themselves. Claudine, do you want to start? Sure, I'm the current technology coordinator of the ASCM and I am based in Melbourne and have been involved in ASCM on and off for since the uh, 1990s. Thank you. Person? I'm David. Uh, I'm the staff worker for ACM in Brisbane. Thanks, David. And Helen and Silves? Helen and Silves, you're on mute. Can't hear. You're on mute. You're on mute. Mute. Unmute. Yeah, unmute. Yes, yes well, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I've been involved with SCM. I first encountered SCM in 1963, I think. I went to the National Adelaide Conference where there were 400 people and uh, it was a big organisation then and I've been involved in it uh, in various ways. And I'm now living in Timor and uh, took part in some discussion groups that the Canberra SCM had last year and made the acquaintance of Sylvester here, who's also who's from Timor, where I'm living now. He can introduce himself. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Sylvester. Uh, I was joining SCM in the Canberra for uh, more than two years, but I'm returned to my country. Now I'm in the East Timor. Mm. Thank you. Julia. Oh, hi, I'm Julia. I'm from Blacktown, Sydney. I'm just new to SCM and I'm just trying to find out how I can contribute. Thank you. Uh, good. Uh, my name's David Gill. I'm, I'm the other David. Uh, <laughs> I, I was uh, on the staff of the Australian SCM back in the 1960s and yeah. that propelled me into uh, an ecumenical commitment that has really shaped the course of my life. Uh, I'm now as retired as you ever get when you've worked for the church. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm unlike you characters up in Hong Kong and Myanmar and East Timor, I'm in Sydney and I am cold. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, and, and my name's Mandy Tibby, I'm in Sydney. First became involved with the ASCM at the end of 1978 as a student and served on the committee of, um, the standing committee of uh, WSCF Asia Pacific and subsequently chair of a Asia Pacific um, and have been chair of ASCM in the past. So happy to be here and looking forward to um, our talk with uh, Fanny and Awe. So, Fanny and Ah Wei, do you want to say something briefly in the similar vein, and then we'll go into a more detailed discussion? Fanny, you're on mute. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I think I met some Claudian long time ago. The, and the main thing, I think I met you last time in the yes. webinar. And then David, David Q, I think I met you a few years ago in Hong Kong. So it's glad to see everyone again and meet new people here again. Uh, do you want me to introduce a little bit myself? Yes. All right. Uh, uh, I'm coming from Hong Kong 
And now I'm in Hong Kong at my home. I just came back uh, uh, from Korea to Hong Kong actually three weeks ago, but I do my quarantine at the hotel. So Hong Kong is quite strict when you, when people come from outside, you have to be quarantined at the designated hotel. So I just came back home less than two days. So still adjusting the things in Hong Kong because it's a little bit, I haven't been back to Hong Kong more than one year. So the weather here is it's very hot here now. <laughs> so still adjusting. Uh, I studied social work before uh, during my university time. So I'm a registered social worker in Hong Kong. And then later on, uh, I worked in some uh, NGOs in Hong Kong. And then later I got a chance to uh, work in Korea, in Seoul, uh, in one of the Korean NGO as an intern. And then after that, uh, I worked with the Korea SCM from 2014 to 2020, last year, until last year. And then after I finished my job with the SCM Korea, and then I start my uh, master's study in Korea also. So I'm now studying the Inter-Asia NGO Studies. And I finished my thesis uh, a month ago, and I'm waiting for my graduation. Wow. <laughs> so basically, basically, I based in Korea. I'm still based in Korea, but uh, there is some things uh, in the regional office I need to deal with. So I came back to Hong Kong uh, three weeks ago, and then I'm um, planning to stay here for two more uh, two more months. Then later I will go back to Korea again. Oh. Thank you, Fanny. What language did you write your thesis in? Sorry? Korean? What language did you write your thesis in? Sorry. Uh, English. Oh, English, right. Good. <laughs> okay, and are we? Could you introduce uh, yourself, please? Yes. Hello, nice to meet you all again. Uh, my full name is Niwi Dia, but also can call me Awe in very shortly. I am from Myanmar, uh, Myanmar SCM. Uh, and I've been as a member of Myanmar SEM since 2014 when I was in first year until now. And uh, in 2019 at Yangon UCF, I uh, was as the representative of Yangon UCF, uh, one of the uh, parts of Myanmar SEM. And uh, from 2020 to till now, um, I have been involved as a student representative of Yangon UCF. Um, so uh, in Myanmar, there are many challenges uh, we have to face. So uh, also Myanmar SCM and Yangon UCF, uh, they also contribute uh, in that challenges. So I am as a student representative, uh, I am still trying my best to that contribution. Um, and I am a student, uh, 23 years old. Uh, uh, and I've been uh, in my final year for two years uh, because the first reason was COVID and the second reason was the re-emergence of malnutrition coup in Myanmar. Uh, but um, in right now, I am uh, working as a uh, exco uh, for uh, WSCF Asia Pacific as well as for the global and uh, I'm really happy to be here. And honestly, I am still really bad in English so I'm really nervous and if there is some uh, mistakes uh, happen in my uh, answer back to the questions uh, please don't remind for that and I will try my best. Thank you. Okay thank you Awei. So your English seems excellent uh, so don't worry you're among friends. Could I just ask is there anyone else who's joined the Zoom since we all introduced ourselves? Is there anyone else Claudine, is there anyone else who hasn't introduced themselves? No, we're, no one else has joined yet. Okay. All right. Well, if, if anyone joins, I'm sure Claudine will let them in. And then if uh, Claudine, maybe if you let us know and we can just give them a moment to introduce themselves. Speaking so, of, we've just got Roz or Roz or Andy okay. joining us. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> So they're in Canberra at the moment, and Antika is 
also with our way, a member of the executive committee of WSCF Asia Pacific. So as well as being the treasurer of the Australian Student Christian Movement. Have we got them online yet? No, no picture yet and no Hello. sound. They're coming on. I've, I've just had a... Ah, they're, they're in the car. Hello, uh, Ross. We're in the process of buying a house and we had a viewing. So Andrew is driving, but we just okay, wanted hi, to Angelica. join. Given, given the importance of the topic and supporting our New South Wales friends and saying hello Thank to Fanny <laughs> as well, we yes. wanted to join. Hey. Hi, everyone. Great to see you. Thank hello. you very much, Ros and Antika. And they're both busy on a Zoom all afternoon where we're uh, talking about the engagement of new national staff for the ASCM. So they've been very busy on Zoom all afternoon. Uh, okay, so... Um, I, I said, uh, Andy, I mean, can I interrupt for a second? I've just had a, a an email from Marion Maddox saying she's having trouble connecting. Uh, uh, maybe Claudine can do something getting, to. Okay. Yeah, thank I'm you. getting on to. Oh, thank you, Claudine. That's wonderful. All right. So I sent Fanny and our way a few questions just so that that wouldn't be completely taken by surprise. And it may be helpful to just start with um, some of those um, questions and then, you know, move through them. But what I had thought was that um, it'll be a bit interactive and if people have questions on the way, then they might want to ask you, et cetera. But just to start, so we get into our stride, I'll, I'll start moving through those questions. So perhaps um, our way, if we start with you, what led you to the SCM and what does it contribute to your life and faith? Um, as a senior friend of Myanmar SCM uh, once told me, SCM is just a stepping stone for us to climb. Um, and I also see SCM as a place to nurture a lot of good leaders. Um, it is also um, uh, the only place where we can learn a wide range of uh, soft skills such as social skills and communication skills that uh, we can learn outside the classroom. And from my point of view, one of the favorite things about SEM is that it allows us to do what we want to do. This may sound awkward uh, to all of you, but I mean, I've been a leader at uh, Yangon UCF for four years in a row. Uh, in, the main, uh, in the meantime, I have led many trips and programs with my uh, fellow student leaders, our students and our senior friends and also our staffs allowed us to lead, uh, gave me full confidence and allowed us to make decisions freely. If something goes wrong while we take the lead, our senior friends and also our staffs will help us uh, fix it and guide us through the process. Even before uh, made those kind of mistakes, our students and our senior friends and also our staffs believe in our leadership. So we got to learn a lot of leadership skills in a very practical way. Um, I see this uh, as an opportunity. This is nowhere. Uh, uh, to be found, uh, except in SDF. Uh, this is the reason uh, that led me to the SDF. And for the second question, uh, what does it contribute to your life and faith? Uh, as SDM is uh, a ecumenic-based organization, uh, SDM has a large uh, strand body of various denominations. Uh, in addition to Christianity, STM has a large number of non-Christian students. That's why STM has given us a lot of training on ecumenic and a lot of interfaith panel discussions. So we understand that we have to respect our own religion as well as other religions. However, STM is home to the largest number of Christian students and it helps us a lot of spiritually. As our students share testimonies, Bible study and worship programs together, I also make significant spiritual progress. As I said before, SEM is the place where a lot of good leaders are born. Uh, so uh, to be a good leader, you need to be a good follower first. So by joining SEM, we were able to learn uh, both good follower and good leadership skills. I believe that these are the skills that we uh, will always use the, throughout our lives. 
And what SEM has taught us more is how to serve, how to serve each other and how to serve ourselves in an organization. So I think this is the most beautiful thing uh, I have ever learned at SEM. Yes, that's all. Thank you, Awe. And Fanny, for you, what would you say has led you to the SCM and what does it contribute to your life and faith? Uh, I think I share a lot with uh, Awe uh, also, but the scale, the SCM scale in Hong Kong is cannot compare to Myanmar because in Myanmar, the scale, the, the SCMs, they have a lot of branches and they have thousands of students. But in Hong Kong, I think it's more like SCM Australia, we are small. Uh, but we always have very uh, passionate and very committed uh, uh, members. Like during my time, I joined SCM actually in 2008, uh, when, uh, during my last year of my social work study. So actually, I'm using my student uh, identity to join SCM. It's a very short time. I think it's more less than half a year. But uh, that somehow is like a step into a, a black hole, a black hole that I never met before. And then you never, I, I mean, you cannot come out anymore. <laughs> so it was, but in a very, very, very good way, I'm meaning, because uh, it totally changed my life, uh, my thoughts, everything in my life. Uh, I think I was, I don't know why I'm joining SCM. Uh, when I recall my memories, it's like one of my friends saying, that, oh, there is someone is holding Bible study. Do you want to join? And then me and my friends, oh, why not? Then just go and have a look. What, is, what are they doing? And then I remember that time the staff coming. And then only me and my friend and the staff, only three of us sitting in a lecture, uh, in a seminar room. It's so embarrassing. Like, okay, what we are doing? here like okay let's uh, let's have a, a bible study and then i think we have a talk on the bible only for 15 minutes okay then we just talk any other thing else but uh it's quite interesting that i continue to join this kind of bible study during my time and then later on after a semester and i graduate and then our staff told us that okay we have a chance you can go to indonesia for a program for a workshop and then my friend said, okay, let's go for as a graduate trip for us. And then actually we don't know what is going on there. We don't know what is the topic of the workshop. And then who, at that time, the regional secretary was Nectar. And then our staff told us that, okay, from Hong Kong, Nectar will go. And then who is like Nectar? Actually, we don't know. We have no idea on uh, what is WSCM. But after joining that workshop, is that is the Indonesia uh, in Indonesia, is a human rights justice and peace workshop. It's one week uh, workshop there. I think I, I, I met Jesus there. It's not something that like, okay, I see a, a, a light there, there is a Jesus sitting with us. No, I think uh, it's a group of people that uh, we met at the first time. We don't know each other a week before, but here we gathered. And then we are talking the same thing. Uh, we are talking to human rights, something that we concern as a Christian. That makes me feel, okay, what these people are doing. And then that's the curiosity brings me to continue my life, uh, to join not only the local level, but also uh, involving in the regional office. I think that is one of the uh, benefits because the regional office is in Hong Kong. Then later on, I figured it out, oh, okay, Nekta is our regional secretary, and then we have our region. I mean, I, I go to study a lot about the region, and then so great that I joined, and then I engaged with the ASEAN. Uh, and then later on, I think after two years later, I joined 2010 as um, uh, to the uh, uh, standing committee like in different position and then until last year I, I changed my position to here to as a regional coordinator. So this kind of uh, journey, uh, the ecumenical movement, actually SCM is uh, the very 
very first time I met ecumenical movement, ecumenian, this kind of um, ideas in ASEAN. Actually, it's widened my uh, spectrum of Christianity. Actually, I was grow up as uh, um, in the missionary school. So Jesus, prayers, worship, that's nothing very strange to me. Uh, but I always have some question I want to ask um, as a Christian. But uh, the school cannot give us uh, the chance. I cannot answer me. Or somehow I think that some question I cannot be asked because they said, because Jesus said, because the Bible said. But SM is a very different place that I can ask all the questions. I can even challenge the Bible. So that's something that I never met before as a, I mean, in the Christianity, but in SCM, we, we definitely can do everything. We question everything. In the Bible, we even question the Jesus, the law. So it's nothing, nothing, no, there is a, a, a very safety place that you can uh, meet friends and they discuss all the things together. So it brings me, quite a lot of change, especially, I think it, I learned what is alternatives. Uh, alternatives uh, in the Christianity, and I can make alternatives even in my life. So I met also uh, um, feminism, women doing theology, something uh, related to an identity of women in SCM. So this kind of thing that uh, I think totally changed my life and I never thought of I would work uh, overseas. I mean, like stay in uh, over a foreign country for that long. So it changed my life a lot. Otherwise, I don't know, maybe I would just stay in Hong Kong and be a social worker like other people did in Hong Kong. Yeah, thank you, Fanny. And um, can we ask Fanny, ask you, what is happening in WSCF Asia Pacific that you particularly value? All right. Uh, I think if in short, I will say solidarity and friendship. I think solidarity, yep. this, this wording uh, is quite important in the SCM. I think not only, of course, uh, not only in SCM, but when we as a person who are doing the movement, whatever movement we are doing. I think the movement is not, of course you can be a very personal movement, but in the SCM level, we are talking uh, that I really never thought I will have a lot of friends all over the world. I think, okay, my friends is only from my middle school, from my high school, from my university. Okay, that's all. I never imagined that I can speak English to my, all my friends that, I mean, so fluently. So I think um, uh, uh, when SCM, we are doing some of the movement, we are concerning human rights, justice and peace. So it's not, not a thing that you can only work in Hong Kong only. Uh, it's something that you found out, it's not about a country, it's not a, a problem of your country only, but you find the similarity around your neighborhood country. Especially when I talk some of the issues in Hong Kong, sharing uh, in the workshop. And then my friends coming from Korea, from Taiwan, from all over the world, they tell us, oh, that is the same in, in my country. And then they share the story. And then later on, we find out that, okay, then what we can do together to bring our voices more bigger and be heard. Uh, so there is one of the particular value that I really treasure in the solidarity. It, uh, whatever we are no longer engaged with ACM, I think when we still engage with the movement in the social movement, that spirit is very, very important to me. And then of course, friendship, like I said before, so I met Claudine, uh, few years ago in the women's committee and then I met Endika and Rose uh, back to 2010 when we are having a, a regional committee in Indonesia. So we keep working together in different positions that somehow, uh, uh, I think I ha heard from some of the senior friends that once you are a CMI, you identify 
you yourself as STMers, you don't need to worry to go anywhere because we have STMers everywhere. So when you go visit one of the countries, you say you're SCM, and there is some of the people say, okay, I'm all from SCM. That's my experience as well. Like, uh, it's connected to the solidarity. The friendship is, can be uh, like very personal, but in that sense, you can build up a, a very big solidarity together. Wonderful. And so this next question is to each of you. Um, how are Christians um, in Hong Kong, Fanny, and mm -hmm. maybe Korea as well, mm -hmm. uh, participating in struggles for democracy in those places? We'll ask you, Fanny, first. And then in Myanmar, our way, how are Christians participating in those struggles for democracy? So maybe uh, Fanny first. Maybe all right. about in Hong Kong and Korea, because you've also <laughs> worked there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I can share a little bit on Hong Kong first. Uh, for so-called fighting the struggle for democracy, I think uh, if really fighting for democracy is from 2014, I mean, like make it as an issue. So you might know from the news that 2014, there is an umbrella movement that somehow is a very, very uh, first uh, demonstration of a fight for the democracy as this kind of big scale in Hong Kong. So of course, uh, under in eighties, in the eighties and nineties, there is some of the movement that or some of the politicians they are fighting for the democracy, but it's a very very scale. Like because everyone in Hong Kong, though we are under uh, UK colonial, colonial, but we still enjoy a lot of freedom. So makes people less thinking of democracy because they still have freedom in Hong Kong. But uh, after the handover into the, uh, in uh, 1997, people feel the pressure from the Chinese government. Like the, the freedom we have is uh, decreasing. The democracy, wherever we talk about the democracy, it seems like, uh, they say, no, 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 we will plan for you. And then it's very seldom to listen to Hong Kong people, what the Hong Kong people actually want. And then after 2014, the very first movement, uh, the umbrella movement somehow is failed. And then last year, uh, not last year, two years ago, 2019, another move, uh, I mean, another wave of the democracy struggle uh, uh, there. Uh, Many of the Christians in the past, actually, they are quite silenced because they, uh, in 80s, 70s, uh, 80s, 90s, I think they're still looking for opportunity to uh, do some missionary in China. So that's why they work very carefully. Uh, and of course, after 80s, late 80s, when uh, the reform of China, they opened the border. So quite a lot of Hong Kong missionaries, they went back to China for their missionary. So I think basically at that, during that time, the Christian talking about Hong Kong democracy is quite few of them only. But after 2014, especially 2019, uh, you see some people, they, I think they grow their identity of, as a Hong Kong people. So they rooted in Hong Kong. Uh, they are willing to come up as a, as a church, as a pastor uh, wearing their, their, their ground, and then praying outside for Hong Kong, praying the democracy, because they know democracy, freedom, if we lost someone, uh, either one, that's something, it's not about we cannot, uh, we cannot vote for, for our leaders, but it's also, you cannot speak, uh, you cannot spread the gospel of, of Jesus as well. So I think they, they feel the threat. That's why they are more and more willing to coming up and fight for the democracy for Hong Kong. But I think it's really, really few years only. I mean, if you talk about the Christian involving in Hong Kong. But of course, there's still always some conservative, which we are really pro-government. So I think everywhere. Also in Korea, but the, his, the history for Christian fight for democracy in Korea is much longer than Hong Kong. Uh, some of you may know 
the uh, democratic movement started from to the uh, 70s and 80s. That is the um, uh, hardest time for them. So after World War II, during the dictatorship, so many of the senior friends, especially of KSCF, I think some you might know. Uh, so KSCF days, is the SCM in Korea? Yes, correct. Yes. So uh, the, many of the senior friends, actually, they uh, one of the uh, activists fight, fighting for the democracy for Korea. And then SCM as a student organization, they actually, uh, uh, it's a national-wide organization during that time. They bring a lot of Christian students uh, to join the movement. So you, you will know some of the senior friends, they fight for democracy, they went to jail, and then uh, there's quite a big part back the Christianity in the Christian, they are one of the very big uh, element for the success uh, of the democracy in Korea. Thank you, Fanny. And uh, I'm sure that there'll be more questions uh, uh, to uh, Fanny and our way as we go. But our way, um, if we ask you the same question about Myanmar, how are Christians in Myanmar participating in the struggles for democracy at present? Um, in Myanmar, the emergence of military coup uh, has appeared uh, frequently um, since a long, uh, long time. Excuse before. me, um, um, our way. Our so way. I, in here, I, I would like. Yes. Yeah. Our way, could you wait one moment? Claudine, were you able to assist Marion Maddox to come on to the Zoom? Yes, we've got uh, Marion, Marion, and Chris and um, Robbie have joined us in the in the. Oh, time. wonderful! Okay, so we've all introduced ourselves earlier. So, Marion, Robbie, and Chris, would you like to say hello and just a brief, a few words about yourself, please? Excuse me, our way. We'll just wait. Yes. My name is Marion, and I was an SCM South worker in the nineteen eighties. And I've just retired as a professor of politics at Macquarie University. And it's really, I, I'm very sorry for joining late, but um, what I've heard, I've really enjoyed, and it's lovely to see everybody. Thanks, Marion. Oh. Great to see you too, although we can't actually see you. Oh, sorry, hang on. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, it's Chris here. Um, I've just joined. Again, sorry I'm late too. Um, it's been a full day, but um, lovely to connect with you. I joined SCM in the 1974 and have been involved in all sorts of ways from the, from the local to the international since then. And um, yeah, so it's great to connect with everybody. Thanks, Chris. Robbie. Yeah, I'm Robbie Tulip. I was in ASCM in Sydney at Macquarie University through the 1980s at the same time as Marion was in uh, ASCM and uh, I uh, was able to uh, visit uh, Manila and also Seoul and Pyongyang on behalf of ASCM and WSCF and uh, for Christian Conference of Asia and uh, the whole theme of international solidarity around Christianity in Asia was just a, a very important question uh, that uh, I'm so pleased to hear, Fanny, what you were saying. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Okay, so our way back. Oh, and I think is that... Um, is, we, we also have, have uh, Helen Hill and Silvest. Yes, yes, they have introduced themselves. Is that Antika? Yes. Antika, would you like to say hello and introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Hello, my name is Anika. I'm the treasurer of ISTM and now also the ex-co um, WSCF Global from Asia Pacific. Thank you. Thank you, Antika. Okay, so our way back to you. Um, you uh, had started to um, uh, tell us a bit about how Christians in Myanmar are participating in struggles for democracy that are going on now. 
Is our way still there? Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, Please go yes, ahead, uh, our way. Can, can you all hear my voice? Yes, we can. Yep, that's fine. Um, in Myanmar, uh, the military coup has, okay, uh, in the military coup has happened again and again. And this is really um, shameful and this is really disappointed. And in here, I would like to share a one kind of story about Myanmar SEM. Um, after 1962, uh, in Myanmar, there were many political circumstances, uh, like uh, right now in 2021, um, so that in that time, uh, the military, they really are uh, afraid uh, to the students' organizations, uh, so they really want to uh, uh, destroyed all of the student organization, including our Myanmar SEM, so that in that time, uh, the seniors of uh, our um, old senior friends of in that time, uh, they they um, they they just uh, rename rename the SEM as a UCF to survive in that time because uh, the. I have and never heard UCF about that. This university, the long, uh, the long term is Christian U fellowship. University Christian fellowship. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Right. Um, so we have to rename UCF because uh, they don't like uh, SEM is Student Christian Movement. So they don't like movement. They don't like the word of movement. So we have to. If we continue with that name, SEM, Strength Christian Movement, uh, we will be in trouble. And we have to, um, uh, we have to, how, how can I say, we have to um, uh, de destroy our organization in that time. That's why uh, our senior friends try to survive with another name, UCF. Um, so, I think um, in Myanmar, uh, uh, like Myanmar SEM, uh, uh, there can be many Christian organization and also a certain Christian organization. So they, uh, they always try to survive uh, no matter what. And uh, another thing is uh, in, in the current situation, I see the Christian in Myanmar doing the best they can. Uh, those who can pray are praying, and um, honest, actually, the number of refugees is increasing day by day due to the ongoing clashes with the Myanmar Army and um, Mandalay. Uh, th that is why some churches, Christian organizations, and Myanmar SEM are also involved in helping those refugees. However, they are not allowed to make their donations openly. Uh, we also hear that it is unfortunate that they are doing uh, so in secret. Uh, in the midst of such anonymity, the Myanmar military has been looting supplies for refugees before the goods reach the uh, refugees. So, yeah, uh, that's all. <laughs> very, very difficult. So um, what helps you face those challenges, Awe? So what helps you face those challenges? Um, yes. Uh, as our leader, uh, Don San Suu Kyi, uh, she once said, courage is uh, not doing the things without fear. Courage is the act of doing the right of a right a right thing out of fear. Uh, so now I keep that in my mind and I do the right thing as much as I can in this current situation. Yes. And Fanny, how about to you? What helps you uh, and the people of Hong Kong face uh, the difficulties that you face? Um. What helps? I think the belief that I think that the identity of as a Hong Kong people, like we are, I don't know, maybe some of the I, I don't know how many friends you have. Uh, they are they are from 
they are Chinese. But one of the things that in Hong Kong, we are looking for our identity. So, okay, we are maybe like nationality or ethically speaking, we are Chinese. But for the identity as we on this ground in Hong Kong, we are coming from Hong Kong. I think we want to tell the world that uh, this identity, we are not Chinese from Hong Kong. We are not Chinese from Taiwan. We are not the Chinese in Malaysia, but we are the people from Hong Kong, this place, this city. Uh, I think this identity we want to maintain and we want to be proud of that somehow spiritually, I think, bring us to, to face those of the challenges. I want to respond to a wise also. I'm actually talk with Hong Kong SCM uh, uh, after the move after the, the movement in 2019. So not only the uh, SCM uh, uh, facing difficulties, but the student unions in the university, actually they got all the uh, suppressed oppressed from the university themselves. So uh, there is two elected uh, student union from uh, the Chinese university and the Hong Kong university. But unfortunately, the university themselves saying that uh, we no longer can provide any support to the student unions. Actually, somehow in an indirect way that we are not admitting these student unions. So for the student unions, they are facing these difficulties, of course, as us as a very small student movement in, in Hong Kong. Like what I always say, I'm thinking maybe probably Hong Kong is following the way of Myanmar SCM in, in the uh, 80s. We might need to change our name because student movement, these two identity uh, is guilty in Hong I mean, finding guilty in Hong Kong. So I think, we, especially the young people, I think I thought they are finding some of the way. Uh, some of them, uh, if they have ability, they will move out. I mean, they leave Hong Kong. They uh, the migrate to, to anywhere. Uh, I know some of the friends from Hong Kong SCM, they are planning to move to UK. So that is the reality. And then we are finding the way. Actually, I don't know how, but uh, I think we people is thinking how we can get uh, along with this situation. Unless you have ability to live, otherwise, we need to think uh, how we can survive in Hong Kong under this kind of uh, uh, stress. And is there anything you think we can we overseas can do to assist you, either Fanny in Hong Kong or Ai Wei in Myanmar? Uh, I think, uh, as I said before, as uh, the spirit I learned from SCM is about solidarity. So one of the very, very uh, good example is uh, a milk tea alliance was uh, formed. Uh, I mean, in a in a in a uh, civil movement way, like uh, the. Uh, Hong Kong, Thailand, Myanmar, I think Taiwan, probably in India as well. So uh, the civil society formed this kind of uh, an informal solidarity, but it helps because after the movement in Hong Kong, Thailand happened last year. So this kind of informal solidarity actually are reacting. And then this year we are supporting Myanmar as well. So uh, uh, but I know because I, I, I live in Korea, I know once the, the movement stopped or there is no any violence happened in that country, uh, no one will, will, uh, will continue to follow the news uh, uh, in Hong Kong. But of course, Myanmar is still under a very, very violent uh, uh, situation. People are supporting Myanmar very much in Korea, in Hong Kong, but like in Hong Kong, Okay, none of the Korean is concerned in Hong Kong anymore. So they thought, okay, maybe Hong Kong movement success or not, or you fail. We no one's know. But if uh, I will always encourage people, uh, if you still want to support the the movement in Hong Kong or in Myanmar, you need to first to go and study the history of Hong Kong uh, 
Myanmar, especially if I'm uh, speaking as a Hong Kong people. So many people will put all the Chinese together. Okay, you are from Hong Kong. Okay, Chinese. Okay, you are from Taiwan. Oh, you're Chinese. But uh, you need to study the, the uh, you, you need to understand why the Hong Kong people insisting this identity as a Hong Kong people. Why Taiwanese is insisting the, the identity as a Taiwanese, not a Chinese. So this kind of thing, um, uh, you need to understand. And then you will know why people are doing. Then I think the uh, automatically the solidarity will come out from overseas. Maybe you can talk with your friends. I think there is some a lot of friends around you. There is the diaspora uh, happen uh, forming. I mean, as a Hong Kong people forming in Australia and in in uh, uh, UK as well. So you may go and approach them, study and. Uh, what kind of, uh, 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 I mean, a kind of study that it will help you to, to support the people in Hong Kong while we are fighting. And then later on, what uh, in, uh, if there is something happening in Hong Kong, then we can react very quickly in order to support, support each other. Thank you, Fanny. And how about in Myanmar, Awe? Is there anything that we overseas can do to assist you in dealing mm. with those matters? Um, yes, um, let me call uh, on our SEMers over, um, overseas to stand with our people uh, until democracy is achieved and with our government, uh, which is NUG, National Unity Government. And there is already a silver uh, war in many parts of Myanmar except the big cities of Yangon and Mandalay in the current situation. Um, so as a result, the number of refugees is increasing day by day. So um, uh, it, it would be great uh, if we could provide the refugees with the basic necessities, medicine and other necessities. Yes, th this is my thought. Thank, Thank you, you Awe. At Easter time, it was very interesting to see when on our televisions, some of the rallies and so on happening in Myanmar, and there were people carrying Easter eggs in the rally. So it more or less said to me, there are Christians there in those rallies. It was really interesting to see just the carrying the Easter egg symbol, brightly colored Easter eggs. Um, it was very interesting to see just the creativity of people uh, to say, well, what is Easter about? It's about resurrection and it mean, it's about freedom and democracy and real abundant living for people. Friends, I'd like to open it up uh, for questions and comments from whoever would like to speak. Um, I just want to make the, the comment. Um, so this uh, is David, David well, Hale from- Oh yes, uh, Brisbane. Yes. Thank for you, those. David. Uh, just a comment uh, about you know, the contrast. You, you both talked about you know, Myanmar and, and, and Hong Kong, just the contrast and having to change the name, what you're going through the, you know, I sit in I sit in my home in Brisbane. You know, um, it, there, there, there's such a contrast there. So it's certainly, um, I, I think it was great that Mandy asked you, "What can we do?" Because we want to do more than just go, "Oh, that's you know, that must be stressful, that must be sad." Uh, we certainly want to do something practical because it, it's it's just such a contrast, and people should have a right to be who they want to be and and have that democracy. So um, you certainly are in our uh, prayers. Thank you, David. Any other comments or questions? I'm quite interested in the role of Christianity in Hong Kong. Perhaps, Fanny, if you could speak about that. Christianity in Hong Kong, right? Yes. I'm sorry, somebody just rang me on my my phone when I was asking the question. Maybe they uh, have the answer for you. Well, uh, the place of Christian, like in a context where uh, democracy and freedom are under challenge, as Mandy said, the Easter egg can be a symbol of democracy and freedom. And so uh, uh, that's an example, but there's a whole history of um, uh, 
liberation theology, which um, feeds into the human rights of uh, Hong Kong. And so there's uh, a question, the role of theology and, and of the church and of, and of Christianity in the current situation for Hong Kong. So Fanny, Fanny. If, if you could speak about those issues. Um, I, because I, I'm not living in Hong Kong for quite years, so I don't know how uh, the theology, uh, how the preaching in the church is, uh, is doing. But uh, what I know is uh, many of, it's quite a lot of the uh, uh, pastor who are willing to openly preaching in the movement due in 2019. Of course, I'm not joining. I don't know like what they're preaching they they're doing, but somehow I listen few of them. It's more related to the uh, uh, the uh, liberal theology that, that uh, you have mentioned. Uh, rather than a very like because the ecumenical movement in Hong Kong is not a big um, a, a big part. It's really really small, and I there is my observation and there's my comment as well. The HKCC, the uh, Hong Kong uh, Council of Churches, Christian, which, yeah, yeah, which we know it should be a very ecumenical uh, uh, organization, right? But sadly, I don't see they speak much on uh, the movement. I mean, I mean, it, because I, I saw the difference between Korea and, and Hong Kong. The NCCK, they speak very directly. So the NCCK being the National Council of Churches of Korea. Yes. Uh, they themselves is a part of the movement in the 80s and 90s. I mean, or probably even earlier. But the churches involved in the movement in Hong Kong is really few and very individual. So it, I, I saw the contrast is uh, the movement in Hong Kong less Christian, less churches or less uh, Christian leaders are standing openly, speak directly criticizing um, the authority very openly, very few, but recent years from 2014 and 2019, more and more, they may not be openly speak something very theologically, but the action they're doing is, okay, let us open our church to the people who join the movement. We are not opening to support I mean, they're using another way to support the movement. Uh, probably as a way, as a diaconia. I don't know, but, but it's not something preaching that, okay, this theology, but they are acting, opening the church for the prayer, uh, for giving a place for the, for, the, for the people to have rest in the church. Or they are the priests are sitting, waiting, and ready to listen to the young people. So I saw that this kind of changes, but not exactly forming something very, you know, theoretically yet. But I'm hoping there's something more is coming as a Christian. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you, Fanny. Mandy, do you mind if I ask our way? Uh, yes. To, uh, Good to idea, respond Robbie. on that question in Myanmar on. Christianity, please. Thank you. So, Robbie, you want to repeat your question? Uh, Wei, could you please speak about the, the role of Christianity in Myanmar? Yes. Um, um, in, in here, uh, as what I already said, uh, the Christians uh already uh do their best in this uh for this current situation and also um, in for right now uh 
the, the pastor and all of the leaders of Christianity, uh, they really have to do all of the things and very carefully because um, uh, many, many eyes are around them. And um, uh, the, the most thing is, uh, uh, they, they, if they want to help the refugee, they have to do in secretly, uh, not in publicly, because uh, uh, if the, uh, unfortunately, if the military know uh, that they are doing like that kind of uh, donations or that kind of help, uh, they can be arrested uh, in anywhere and in any time. So, uh, uh, so, I think they, they will do in their best way in secretly and um, <laughs> yes, that's all. And, and um, Christianity is a minority in uh, Burma, in Myanmar, isn't it? Yes, of course. Um, in here, uh, uh, Buddhist is the majority religion. Uh, yes, of course, uh, Christian is the minority. And uh, in here, uh, there are also many denominations, um, yeah, and also many organizations. Thanks very much, Dawei. Uh, Monday, I want to ask, ask some questions. Is that still Silvero? Silvers, that was Silvers. Silvers, hello, Silvers. Uh, yes, yes, I'm Silvers. Please go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I want to ask him, uh, some questions to our way. Uh, hello, Arwe. Uh, how ACM, ACM and Christianity in Myanmar to help and contributing uh, problems in Myanmar? Uh, could you please repeat it, Silves? Uh, I want to ask you a question. Uh, how ACM, ACM and the Christianity in Myanmar to helping and contributing problems in the Myanmar? Uh, what they are doing. So what? So our way, I think uh, Silva's question is: What exactly is the SCM doing in Myanmar at the present time? What sort of things are you doing? Uh, yeah. I think that's the question. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, par oh, yes. Uh, before you answer that, we also welcome Andrew Francis. Andrew, welcome. So we, we just all introduced ourselves. Andrew, would you like to say a couple of words about you, please? Well, for, sure. Thanks, Mandy. First of all, I'm very sorry for being late. I had something else happen at home, so I was late. Um, I was in the SCM between, in the 1990s, basically, in, in Australia and in the Asia-Pacific region and the Exco. And I worked with Cynthia Yuan from Hong Kong uh, on the Exco for her term. So it's lovely to hear the stories. In fact, I was in Hong Kong just a couple of years ago and I met Cynthia and Wong Wai Ching, who many of you know. Um, so it was great to see them again after a long time. So sorry for being late and inter interrupting. Uh, just happy to listen. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. So our way back to Silva's question of what exactly is the SCM able to do in this situation in Myanmar? Yes. Um... And very recently, I have heard that uh, two of our senior friends from Myanmar SEM, one is, uh, his name is Go Chong No. Uh, he is uh, trying to help uh, some of the refugees from Minta, uh, which is the Chin state in Myanmar. Uh, and there is also happening silver war in that place. So he tried to uh, support uh, refugees from those place. And, uh, another person is uh, Po Mu, who is the women coordinator of our Myanmar SEM, and she is trying to help uh, her uh, place, Gaya, Gaya State, uh, and uh, Gaya State uh, in Myanmar. And in that place, also the Silver War is happening. So uh, those two persons, uh, they are trying to uh, help those refugees. So. Uh, uh, the, the rest of our SEMR uh, try to support them uh, as much as we can. And uh, me also recently, I, I, uh, I have a, uh, some kind of donation from my senior friend. So I uh, take 
uh, take them uh, to them and uh, help. So th this is the all of the things that we are doing for right now. Yes. And um, Awe, we heard um, you mentioned civil war in Chin State and civil war in Ga'an. We heard in Australia that the, the civil wars in the various states, the ethnic minority states, have increased and that there is um, quite a lot of um, um, coming together um, um, against the military crackdown and the, the, there's more working together than in the past from the small states. Is, is that your experience? Uh, yes, of course. Um, not only Gaya State and uh, Chen State of Menda, there are uh, many, many places already happening and except the big cities of Yangon and Mandalay. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, now staying in Yangon. So, but we also have to care for our, we cannot say when will happen a uh, war in Yangon or Mandalay. So we have to uh, take things in very carefully. Um, yes. And also uh, uh, Myanmar SEM programs and also Yangon UCF activities are all uh, already in, uh, stop, uh, stop for this situation, and all we are doing right now is uh, just helping to the refugees. Yes. So before the um, uh, military coup, um, how many branches were uh, operating in the uh, Myanmar UCF or whatever you whether you call it UCF or SCM? Um, what how what how many were there and what churches did people come from? Um, before the military coup, um, even in yes. the COVID time, uh, we we did many programs on online, like uh, women uh, women trainings and also uh, leadership trainings. Many trainings are happened in uh, online uh, through Zoom, uh, even in the COVID time, but. Uh, before that COVID, uh, our Myanmar SEM uh, usually do many programs and many activities. And there can be, I think, uh, from Mijina, uh, uh, the, the top of the city in Myanmar map, uh, to the uh, lowest city of uh, the way, I think we, um, more than 10 branches uh, which are participating in Myanmar SCF. And also in Yangon UCF, uh, in under the Yangon UCF, there are 15 university uh, participating. So um, they, they are, as Fanny said, we have uh, more than 1,000 students uh, participating in Myanmar. And Myanmar SCM also, uh, uh, also do, also, also uh, conduct uh, many uh, soft skill programs like uh, uh, ma many camps like ecumenical study camp and peace building um, and FNMRC, a frontier mission and many, many things. Yes. Thank but you. But for right now, all are in. Yes. Sure. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Mandy, I, I, I missed most of the discussion, but I just want to say it's really great to hear about the movements in um, in Hong Kong and Myanmar, and how you know the it's it's very encouraging that, that things are still going despite all the difficulties, and um, that people are making uh, great sacrifices, I think, and great efforts to to make make the place work a little bit better, and so. Um, Full respect and thank you for, for that. Any other comments or questions? Chris? Yeah, just a comment, Mandy. I suppose it could be a question. Uh, but, um, with my limited um, contact with senior friends from Hong Kong and um, Myanmar, what one thing I've been struck by is that the senior friends are 
very um, impressed by the courage of the, the younger generation at the moment. And yeah, I've just been, that, that's the message I've been he hearing from SCM senior friends from Myanmar and Hong Kong that they're in awe of, of, their, of their children, basically, children and grandchildren at this, this time and they're the contemporaries of their children and grandchildren. So yeah, that, that's my comment in terms of how the generations in SCM and WSCF uh, are feeling from that limited feedback that I've had. I don't yeah, know. Thank other, you, Chris. I don't know if other people have, um, have heard. Oh, yes. Comments. Could I Any say other comments? Something? Helen, yes. yes. Uh, yes, no, this is this is very interesting to hear all this and to get this sort of intergenerational aspect. One, I, I'd like to sort of ask a slightly more general question beyond, beyond um, Hong Kong and Myanmar. This would apply to any of the ethnic branches in the region. Are any of them engaging with what could be called post-colonial theology? Because we have a member here in Timor, Levi Vasconcelos, who some of you will remember we had a session with, um, with the Canberra SCM when I spoke also. And he is very keen to get some discussion, debate around the region of Asia and also the Pacific on people doing work with post-colonial theologies. Now, is this come onto the agenda of many SCMs as yet? I know there are some groups in Melbourne doing this. I don't know of any in Sydney, but I don't know Sydney very well. Um, anybody got any comments to make about this? Fanny, post-colonial theology, are people thinking about that in Hong Kong? I think not. Probably in a theological, uh, not as a re, uh, religion uh, thinking, but uh, broadly like uh, sociological or politically thinking. I think it's quite a lot of people are talking about this. Uh, the problem of us is we don't uh, exactly dealing with this colonial, I mean, post-colonial period, like after the handover. So the UK left. The Chinese came. So, what the problem left in Hong Kong somehow uh, is affecting us. But 20 something years after Hanover, I don't think there is much discussion on that. Uh, but beyond SCM or beyond Hong Kong, in the region, at least mm. I think in the program I joined before, I mean, in the past 10, 13 years. I do feel that we are talking this kind of, of um, how can I say, about a, a macro analysis less and less, like more contextually talking, like probably, okay, like what is happening in Myanmar? And then what is the situation? Why it happens? And then why Hong Kong is having this kind of movement last two years? I think we, I don't know, probably also like because we don't have much programs in the region because of the decreasing of funding. So in the, in the program that we have to shorten our time, some of the discussion we need to remove. Uh, but I think we, 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 I don't know how uh, we can bring back this discussion uh, in the SM, probably as a Christianity, what's uh, the theological thinking we should use and help us to analyze the situation in not only in those countries, but as a region. But what I think is probably India SCM, they might in engage much more uh, this uh, theological thinking more than other countries. Yeah, and our, our way, sure, but yeah. Our way, anything you'd like to say on that topic? Are people talking in Myanmar about post colonial theology at all? 
Um, honestly, I don't uh, know that that kind of word. Okay. Well, Helen, would you like to say in the East Timor context, a newly independent country, um, one could assume that uh, post-colonial theology could be quite important. I think you did some work in Africa where post-colonial theology was quite important. And so it's interesting that you, you raise that. Would you like to say any more about that and what you think post-colonial theology, why it might be important? Yes. Yes, well, it, it, I'm really just sort of beginning to process this sort of thing. And it's interesting that, uh, uh, Mandy, that you made reference to, to the work I did in Africa. Well, I did in relation to African movements of liberation when I was working at the WSCF's Europe Africa project in London. That's many years ago, 70s, early 70s. And liberation theology was uh, coming up in Latin America. And then a lot of people were making the point, now liberation theology has to be contextual theology. There has to be uh, specific conditions under which Christianity came into various countries. And I've observed this, and all, even more so when I worked in the Pacific, in Fiji and New Caledonia, you had quite different ways that the gospel came in under the British and the French and the Portuguese and different classes that took it up. So it's also a sort of sociological theology because you're looking at you know, what message was extracted from the gospel to tell people about what the Bible was all about. And then uh, Levi Vasconcelos has just come back from doing his master's in Kupang. And he keeps asking me, Helen, he said, are there any post-colonial theology groups in the SCM in Australia? And, and, and strangely enough, I had to say, well, most of the post-colonial theology groups I know are actually outside the SCM. There are a couple of people in the Uniting Church in Melbourne had a, a seminar which I went to just before I came to Timor and I just wondered whether it is something that the WSCF Asia Pacific region might be taking up because it does relate to the justice issues, it relates to power structures, you know, how do particular groups of uh, people come to be in power in different countries and what sort of message were they using from the gospel sometimes, you know, and of course this relates exactly to 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 to, uh, to Paulo Freire and, and I was fortunate when I was a frontier intern to be a student of Paulo Freire twice in, in seminars and he would always get us to analyse exactly what the context of education was in our country and the power structures and I just wondered, you know, to what extent um, SCMs are engaging in this sort of work still or again or always have been on because I haven't really had a lot to do with the formal structure of SCM in many years so I don't know whether anyone else has got anything to say about that. Yeah I would have something to say my impression is that from when I was working with Christian Conference of Asia 2001-2 and prior and through the SCM that there was a lot of talk about things like Buffalo theology. Um, and a lot of people were trying to, it wasn't really called post-colonial theology, but people were trying in a very serious way to try and say, what does the gospel look like in our context? And to look at what, what, what does it mean in our context? And are we worshiping in a way that is meaningful to us? Um, uh, what, is, what is important to us? So I don't think it was really called that uh, post-colonial theology, although India always talks a lot about the colonial period, but I think people were doing that and thinking about it, but not using that term, and that could well be still the case. Look, I don't I, know if Fanny or Awe have any comment. I agree with Mandy, because uh, in the context of Korea, like in the 80s, 70s, 80s, they have Minjong theology, right? Yes. Theology. Yes. But, but, Which is theology of the people, yes. Yeah, but that is very contextual. It's from Korea, from the people's experience. But is this 
Minjong theology no longer. I mean, there is still some people are talking about Minjong theology. Okay, but in the younger generation, at least in my time when I was joining the the movement, I was. I think I was the last. I mean, last. I don't know generation <laughs> to hear Minjong theology. Then, then now the young people, the Christian, uh, not necessarily they are from SDM, but the Christian. Uh, the ecumenical movement in Korea, the younger generation, they are no longer talking about Minjo theology, but actually they are doing something very similar, but they don't put this frame uh, in their theology. Mm. They Probably they have their own new, I mean, it's not as a Minjo, but a very specific target group, maybe LGBT theology, women's theology, eco theology, something that put into that spe- uh, particular uh, target, not as a big frame as Minjung. Okay, and our way, what about in um, Myanmar? Ah, uh, you're on mute, are you? Uh, yes, I think similarly can be happening in Myanmar, uh, as Fanny said. Um, uh, Honestly, uh, I don't know that kind of uh, uh, th- theology, and I, I have never heard like that. Uh, but I think our senior friends, they, uh, they guide us, and um, the ways of they guide us and they teach us can be, uh, partic- uh, can, can be with that kind of theology. And uh, I, the one thing is whenever we do in Bible study in uh, SDM, uh, our... Uh, where you've frozen, please, could you start to get you when you said, from when you said, whenever we do Bible study in SCM and then it froze. Oh, we, uh, not only uh, side, they, they, they guide us to learn from many sides of use. Yes, so I think uh, theology can be uh, deal with us without knowing, uh, without, without knowing uh, that. <laughs> that term. Sorry. Yes, for yes. My bad English. No, no, that's wonderful, oh, no. thank you. Okay, anyone else, any thoughts, comments, questions? David. David Gill. I, I would just make the point that uh, <clears throat> Asia is incredibly diverse, uh, maybe more diverse than Africa, although generalizing like that is always risky. But uh, when we talk about uh, Christians in Asia. We're talking about people who are in, who have many different, different histories facing different issues. Uh, if I think of Hong Kong, for example, my young friends there are not interested in the issue of post-colonial uh, uh, is, uh, problems. They're facing, as they see it, uh, neo-colonial problems. Uh, so, and w- when we speak of the Christian presence in Asia, remember, uh, Christians are a minority in all countries except East Timor, Philippines, Australia, New Zealand. So that changes the things you need to think about and the way you need to frame the issues. Just, just a, a minor uh, comment. Yeah, thank you, David. Any other thoughts from anyone before we come to a close soon? You're muted, Mandy. You came off mute and went back on again. Friends, I think this has been a very rich sharing and I think our thoughts and prayers are very much with the people of Myanmar, the people of Hong Kong and other places facing great oppression. To me, it was incredible to see in the newspapers that at Victoria Park yesterday in Hong Kong, although uh, there were threats that people could be imprisoned for for up to five years if they participated in any demonstration, um, uh, remembering the Tiananmen Square massacre, there were people with their flashlights with a a light and so on all around and, and Victoria Park, which usually there are thousands of people, commemorating that massacre, and it was all blocked off. 
but around the perimeter, there were all these people with their, if they didn't have a candle, they had their phone with the light on, the torchlight. And I thought, wow, how incredibly brave are they with um, knowing that the threat is that if they are remembering that massacre, then they could be imprisoned for up to five years. And likewise in Myanmar, we see these young people standing, marching, keeping on marching. And you know, we just it just blows your mind away to see the bravery of those people standing that way. And our thoughts and prayers are very much with you. And I think, um, as Fanny said, there is a diaspora in Australia. Um, there are people from Myanmar, there are people from Hong Kong. From time to time, we can join, whether it's a prayer meeting, a rally, a fundraising dinner, whatever it is, there are things we can do. And so I think it behoves each of us who are not on that front line, um, having to make those choices um, to uh, pray, of course, at all times and in all places, especially for those in great need. And also to, to do, as Fanny was saying, you know, and I think our way you were saying, the question is, what are we doing? And, uh, um, you know, so somehow find ways. If we're serious, then how are we living that out? And how, are we, how is our solidarity real? So that is our challenge in the Australian SCM and uh, uh, the broader society in Australia. And definitely much is happening in solidarity uh, in Australia. Um, and uh, much remains to be done. But we are very thankful that the SCMs are playing their part and um, are for justice and human rights. And uh, we are in awe of you, as, um, as uh, was said earlier by Andrew. We are in awe of you and by Chris, um, thinking of uh, how people are managing. And we appreciate both Fanny and our way. You both said people have to be really thoughtful about what they do and it's not easy. So I wonder if someone would like to uh, say, um, we've per so thank you so much to Fanny and our way. Would someone like to say a closing prayer, please? Could I say a closing prayer? Yes, uh, please, Robbie. I, I'd just like to preface it. Um, I'm uh, the secretary of the Canberra Region Presbytery for the Uniting Church in Australia. And um, we are, um, restarting our presbytery magazine, which I will edit on the, the topic of uh, advocacy. So the uh, it will be issued in um, August. And I feel that the question of advocacy for our fellow Christians and people across Asia is uh, quite an important topic that I'd really welcome some input into the magazine from the uh, from the student Christian movement family. If people would like to follow up with me about that, you'd be very welcome. So actually, if, if, if you need to talk with SCM Hong Kong, because they are uh, the one there, the, the, the movement who involved in the, the movement last two years, I think it would be good if you have a chance to talk with them. Thank you, Fanny. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Robbie. So shall we just close in prayer? Yes, please. And as we uh, think in this uh, season of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is uh, in our hearts and in our churches. And uh, we pray for the Holy Spirit in the oppressed nations of Asia. And we uh, pray for the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we pray for the student Christian movements or the World Student Christian Federation and all their friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you very Mandy. much, everyone. It's yeah. wonderful to see everyone. And uh, Fanny and our way, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And we will cogitate much. We'll think much about what you've said and uh, this session will be placed, I think, on YouTube yes, or the ASCM website or something. Claudine, can you tell yes, us about that? Yes, no, if there's no objections, this will, um, I'll put this up on our YouTube channel and there'll be a link on our, um, on our website as well. Thank you all.
Okay, friends. So, by the way, before we go, there will be a discussion online, and Tika has organised with the SCN of Indonesia about the situation in Palestine, Israel at the moment, and that will take place um, this week on the 10th at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And if you want more information about it, I think you should talk to Antika. Is that the best, Antika? Yeah. Okay, so I, I think, think you should lost. contact Antika. Or contact me okay. if you haven't got his details. Or contact Claudine. Can okay, I friends. And can I think Helen. on that one, Helen. I can also yes. tell you, I can tell you on that one, oh. I think that Marcelo, who is the new general secretary of the WSCF Global, and Yasmina, who is Palestinian and is an ex-co member, and one other person um, who's a Palestinian will be speaking on that. And the, that is, uh, and he also organised that with um, the SCM of uh, Indonesia and, uh, and with Marcelo and WSCM. And Helen so had to Fanny, Could I? Sorry, Claudine. Helen had something to say. Helen, yes, Helen, you. Now, some of you Australians will know I used to run a. Uh, a Yahoo group called SCM Friends. That has now collapsed. And I'm encouraging people to join a Facebook group called Network of SCM Senior Friends in Asia and the Pacific. It was set up by Sunita. And Sunita, when she was the secretary, and I had some correspondence with her, and she's very happy for that to be used to build networks of SCM senior friends across the different countries. Uh, and I know the Team Marie's SCM would like to organise some Zoom meetings, possibly on the basis of there being numbers of people in that group. So if more of you could join it, uh, just look Network of SCM Senior Friends. Just search for that on Facebook and ask to join it. And um, she's the moderator of it. But, um, it you know, so that we could get more stuff put up there and uh, and and including the the SCM of Timor very keen that there be advocacy done on West Papua because there are as appalling things going on in West Papua as in Palestine and yet it's hardly making the media for various reasons and one of my former students from Victoria University who did come to an SCM camp in Melbourne is now in Queensland working for the diplomatic front of the West Papuan uh, resistance. So we will try to be having some discussions with them and their strategy for getting the issue re-looked at at the United Nations. Yeah. Sorry, I better stop there. Thank you, Helen, much appreciated. So friends, uh, God bless and thank you for um, being present. Bye for now, Thanks. everyone.